Dave has a question. Let's go ahead and get any questions uh, before we get started out of the way. You got a question, Dave? No, I inadvertently hit the little icon. Okay, great. Um, and just for everybody's information um, that's on here now, Dave Mueller uh, with the BLM out in Boise uh, was the uh, the lead on the uh, complexity analysis revision team, and um, he's a wealth of knowledge on this thing. So um, if we run into any snags or he needs to help me clarify some things, it's uh, I'm glad you're on here. Thanks, Dave. And uh, yes, we're recording this webinar. Um, it'll be um, available through the uh, SharePoint uh, after we get done. And we'll send you a link to that when we uh, finish up. All right, so what I've got is um, just a short uh, presentation here on uh, some of the changes for the 2017 complexity analysis um, process. And, uh, and uh, go ahead and get started. Some of the new features um, and changes to the uh, from the old process. Um, we uh, revised the content of the guide so that it hopefully provides more clarity and concise instructions as far as the intent as to what to fill out. Um, for each one of the elements. Uh, the spreadsheet is completely different than it used to be, or the worksheets for the complexity analysis. It's in an Excel, Microsoft Excel spreadsheet format. Um, you can convert that into other formats to um, spreadsheet type stuff. I know a cu couple of folks have tried it in the, uh, the Google um, forms or spreadsheets or whatever they have over in that side, but um, it's in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, it's interactive. It's got some uh, functionality to it that was uh, very important for a lot of the folks that were surveyed to have updated and, and made more easy for the planner uh, to be able to select uh, is it high, moderate, or low? Um, and some of the other quantity um, qualifiers there. So we uh, came up with a spreadsheet in Excel. Um, and we're, we're going to spend most of the presentation going over that. Um, the intent or the focus of the whole complexity analysis process and the rating system kind of shifted to we're now focusing on identifying and mitigating risk to values that we identify that are associated with the prescribed fire project. Um, so we the main focus are the values and the risk of those values from implementing the prescribed burn. Uh, the consequences uh, box has been or consideration has been uh, eliminated and change more to the looking at the risks that are identified um, and then in the prescribed fire plan the mitigations that we apply to mitigate those risks how complex is that operation going to be to actually implement the prescribed burn so the consequences are apparent because the values never change and um, that's a, a kind of a paradigm shift from where we were before um, and I think it's going to be a, a more fluid um, natural kind of process now from the way we look at wild and fire management and applying it to the prescribed fire complexity. Um, we developed a commonalities table between uh, that links the prescribed fire plan elements um, from the PMS 484, the interagency prescribed fire template, and those um, required elements to the complexity analysis elements so that it's easier for the planner to, you can look across this thing and see where there's common linkages between the elements in the prescribed fire plan or areas in the prescribed fire plan where mitigations can be identified back to the um, complexity analysis and we provide a, a section in the technical difficulty worksheet to um, identify those. 
Um, so the we were trying to the intent with that is to have a closer association of the prescribed fire plan and integration of the prescribed fire plan and and the complexity analysis into the whole process and um, you can crosswalk back and forth between the two uh, the we included a calculated prescribed fire preliminary and summary complexity rating and it's um, it's a tally of all of the ratings from the risk and the technical difficulty um, worksheets that is identified on the summary worksheet on a, a graphical interactive graphical slider bar it, it's like a speedometer type thing but it's and we'll take a look at that when we get in the worksheet but it um, identifies the pre plan risk uh, ratings and then the post plan risk ratings what you identify in your plan um, and uh, just to give you a visual on the um, where you started and where you wound up it was it a high high or was it a uh, a low moderate you know we've always had these com discussions so this is actually a visual visual of like high moderate low moderate low high um, to help us kind of formulate our our final rating and there's also a table a tabular um, portion in the summary now that indicates uh, what um, your pre-plan rating were was for each one of the complexity elements and so you can look at your pre-plan elements from top to bottom and then uh, go across the the columns there and see where you had changes you can quickly identify where you had changes in the plan and uh, get a snapshot of the overall uh, what stands out as far as your changes and the high priority type elements and uh, finally, there, there was changes to the um, uh, complex or the prescribed fire template, the interagency template, and it, and it uh, specifies that the complexity analysis summary tab worksheets will be printed and inserted in the plan as element three of the prescribed fire plan. And the worksheet that came out first, I, had a lot, I got a lot of feedback on that right away that. Um, it was it was the process was kind of difficult to get that printed in a format that um, that worked well uh, that the agency administrators could actually read what they were signing and stuff like that so um, with the help of some folks we uh, did a little modifying to the worksheet uh, just in the formatting and and the print formatting things like that and the cell size and some of the definitions for the cells and came up with the uh, worksheet modifications that are part of the uh, file that I attach to this uh, the region 8 version 1 um, spreadsheet and hopefully that when you pull that in um, and you go to print file it'll uh, come up a little bit within the lines and you can read it um, you still might have to do some modifying on the page breaks and things but hopefully it's a little bit better all right and so um, the process for prescribed fire planning now due to the modifications and the changes in direction or not direction but the uh, intent the focus of the uh, complexity analysis the process now for the whole planning process will be um, go through worksheet one on the complexity analysis that's your preliminary um, uh, looking at your preliminary risk and identifying your values um, identify yeah identify your values worksheet one um, go to your second worksheet in there after you identify the values based on what your interdisciplinary teams your agency administrators your your local knowledge of the area uh, southern wildfire risk assessment scores things like that and to identify the values in and out of the burn area um, and then you go rate the risk to those values 
prior to developing your burn plan as if you, we just go out there on a, any given day under any situation and implement the prescribed burn um, and uh, kind of assess the risk to those values under that scenario. That gives you an idea of where to go in your burn plan to mitigate some of those risks that stand out um, and uh, to identify you know, with your agency administrator then has a chance to identify some of those high priority elements that are um, for, for them as far as their aspect of implementing that prescribed burn. Um, you write your prescribed fire plan um, to mitigate some of those risks that were identified. You come back to the complexity analysis worksheet and uh, you do your final uh, risk um, worksheet and that way you can compare you can go from you know the uh, moderate to low or high to moderate or in some cases um, a lot of cases it doesn't change um, we mitigate things to make it uh, more of a low moderate but uh, it's still moderate so um, but there you can identify um, those changes and tie it back into the burn plan um, the worksheet force technical difficulty worksheet and that's looking at from the mitigations you applied or if you weren't able to how difficult what's the tech technical difficulty in implementing uh, the prescribed burn is in implementing those mitigations to the risk um, then there's the final complexity summary tab and that's the one that uh, um, a lot of the things are auto-generated on that from the values, the uh, pre and post risk assessments, technical difficulty table, the uh, calculated summary. Um, all that shows up on there. The final summary box though, you uh, as the burn plan preparer uh, with your team, can't you determine the complexity level of the burn, um, the low, moderate, or high? That's not a uh, calculated value. The calculated value is just to help guide. Uh, but if you identify that the burn, although it ranked out as moderate, it, and you're feeling it's high, you can rank it as high and you can explain why it's high or vice versa um, in that summary tab. And that's what gets printed out and put in the burn plan as element three. Uh, once you get that done, um, we go through the technical review process as always and um, discuss those things with the technical reviewer, um, answer their questions and uh, come back to the team and if everything um, goes according to plan or you have to make edits, you know, we go through that process as usual um, and we get uh, the approval signatures on the complexity analysis in the burn plan and uh, we're ready to implement. All right, so printing the worksheets, touched on that earlier. Um, that was one of the things that we had a little bit of hang up with earlier um, from the release. So uh, uh, we already went over the worksheet five uh, is the burn plan element three. It should print up as two pages now and be legible, um, hopefully for everybody. Um, all the other worksheets are to be printed and put in the appendix of the burn plan um, and they should come up. It, it takes a few pages of paper but um, it's legible and there's plenty of room for you to write in your own uh, narrative on for each element now and uh, we developed the region 8 model to help mitigate that scale issues. So that is the end of my little PowerPoint here. Um, before we jump into the worksheet, which is going to be a shared screen, and I'm going to do go over um, the features and some of the different things in the uh, actual live worksheet. Um, are there any questions? Well, if you think of anything, just uh, go to that Q&A box there. I'm going to, wait a minute, what do we got here? How do we, there we go. Share my screen. 
And I'm sure for a few of y'all out there, this uh, Adobe Connect webinar um, is a uh, this is a kind of introduction for y'all to make sure it works, and it is for me actually putting it on. So um, let me go ahead and give me some notes on that too. What you think of the presentation and what we can do to make it better? So hopefully you're seeing the worksheet. Great. Okay. So this is the uh, this is a live worksheet, just like if we had downloaded it from the NWCG website. Um, PMS 424-1 is the uh, form number. You can find it there in the publications if you don't have it or you can get it from this webinar. Uh, first thing you'd want to do is save this file. Uh, just go in and save it as somewhere in your planning documents. Um, and we'll just call our dash one, put it in there. Good. So that's our, um, that's where we saved it. And then you can, um, you can start to modify and uh, fill in some of the attribute tables on this thing. Uh, you put your prescribed fire name here. And then you can, um, and you'd want to save that, save this in your project file for the prescribed burn, where your draft documents are, where your uh, compliance documents, maps, all that other stuff um, you're going to keep in the electronic file. Um, some of the really nice things about this um, new worksheet is we had a lot of functionality that we could play with as opposed to the old Word documents. Um, if you notice, when you hover over the elements, this is these are the value elements, um, you get the definition fr uh, from the guide, from the uh, actual NWCG guide on this right here so you can see the intent of what on-site values what you're supposed to be planning to so it's valued resources human natural cultural then the prescribed fire project area um, so each every element in the worksheets is going to have this pop out um, definition for it so that you don't have to flip back through the guide to get the intent of where you're um, where you need to be planning to, or what maybe what you need to be considering. Um, okay, so we, our value elements, which typically do not change, and that's why they they've been pulled out from the from the old format um, and identified at this. Is that's that's our main concerns, and that's usually why we're doing what we're out doing out there on those landscapes. Um, so. Uh, they typically don't change unless it's a case of migratory birds or something like that. That unless the the value is actually physically removed from the area, um, it's going to remain there. Or the political interests radically change um, after we write the plan. They're typically uh, at the time of the plan. That's what they are. Put it that way. So um, we talked about the five. I'm kind of bouncing around here. Forgive me. I've skipped over um, the second part of this. You go ahead and save it and name it. But down here at the bottom are your are your tabs for your worksheets. And so there's five worksheets in the workbook. Uh, the values, preliminary risk, post-plan risk, post-plan technical difficulty, and the summary rating. And you can go to those um, whenever you want to through the process. If you get information, you can go back and forth. Um, they're saved easily. You can print each workbook individually or worksheet individually, or you can print the whole workbook too. Um, so that's those are some options there. So there's your values. We broke it out by the quantity um, of the, the values, like how many of those values are within the project area and then how significant are those values um, and a, as far as um, agency administrator priority uh, you know any the significance value to you if, if timber is the high priority um, high significance feature that we're either protecting or we're worried about protecting in an area private or you know on-site or off-site uh, then that would be, uh, you would identify the significance of those. Um, and so to do that, 
we've got we here's another thing that was nice from the old one is uh, you, we included these drop down boxes and so uh, for quantity there's nominal few multiple and considerable and uh, for significance it's high low uh, low moderate and high um, this quantity is uh, similar to some of the other risk ratings and complexity analysis that we use for uh, incident management and uh, that's a, another attempt to tie this rating system this risk rating system into other current risk rating systems that we use out there in uh, incident management coffee's done um, okay so we got our values. We picked how many, you know, on-site values, the significance of those. Here's where you describe your values that are out there. And this is a free text box. Um, and you can just keep going. Uh, this, These boxes um, are editable. You can uh, spell check them using some of the tools with Excel and things like that. Um, and this is where you put your what we're talking about out there on the landscape. Uh, you go to the next tab. It's the preliminary risk. Uh, when you download it from NWCG, most of the risks will be, I think all the risks will be assigned to a high value. Um, so we're just going to change this to a high. Um, so you see we've got four columns here. Um, the elements are on the left. The risk rating is uh, the second column there, and you can pick high, high, moderate, or low after you kind of um, assess what you have for safety um, and related to the implementing the prescribed burn without mitigations. Um, and this fourth column, agency administrator discussion completed. Um, this could be agency administrator, IDT, um, the folks that um, have the the stakeholders. Um, to, this is a column. It's not required, but it's it's a very nice tool for documenting that there was inclusion, especially for the agency administrators, um, that they're aware of and their opinions have been heard on how these elements um, pertain to the implementation of this burn and so what our ratings are. So the rating descriptors, uh, we spent a lot of time going over the old descriptors and trying to um, identify more clear descriptors that could apply to the a, a general prescribed burn and from um, case studies from uh, escape prescribed burns and um, things like that. We've, we went through a lot of uh, research to come up with common descriptors for these elements so um, when you these are the for the rating descriptors um, you know it's it, it, it provides them right here it's the same descriptors that are identified in the prescribe in the um, guide in the 424 it's but we provided them here for one thing to for the flow of the worksheet so you don't have to keep going back to the guide and trying to figure out what it means um, as well as to, to spur your thought process into uh, where you, what you might be considering as a low, moderate, or high. Uh, if you change the rating, it changes the descriptor to reflect what's in the guide now. So it's got all the descriptors for low, moderate, and high, and you can just flip in between those. Um, it's not an exhaustive list of descriptors for every prescribed fire project. So this box down here underneath the descriptors for each element is a free text box for you to tell your story. Um, you do have, if these descriptors fit your situation, um, you can notate that down here that the descriptors provided um, are, are, are satisfactory or however you want to describe that um, they explain what your situation is there um, empirical knowledge and local knowledge and IDT input all of that's very important to document down here in these boxes so 
the process would be to just work your way down through the worksheet. Um, let's see, there's one of those. Well, let's see. Hmm. I'm the I'm hovering over fire behavior to read the definition and some of it's cut off there. So um, those definitions are found in the uh, guide, and there's probably some folks out there that know more about Excel than I do to fix that. I found to fix some of them, but um, there's the definition for it. And the same process, you got your low, moderate, high, you got your descriptors here uh, for fire behavior. You would definitely want to include, you know, your own narrative as to um, your thoughts on that. It, if it's not, see, here's your page break, this dot dash line here, because of my view. Um, you might be able to modify, you know, to modify some of these cell sizes so that it will print up on the same page. Um, those are some of the things you'll probably still have to do in your layout editing. Um, but it should be a lot better. So yeah, over here you can pick yes or no. If you feel that the agency administrator and stakeholders have been um, identified and they're aware and they had, they agree with what where we're going with it. And so you just work your way down the process. Um, or through the worksheet until you get down to the bottom and you can come up with a uh, preliminary risk rating. Uh, prescribed fire duration is a new element. Um, it was included after review of a lot of case studies, escape fire, prescribed fire reviews. It was a very, very common denominator in escape prescribed fires. And uh, so we uh, determined to, uh, decided to go ahead and put that in there and um, there's the definition for it, the uh, length, length of time, hours, days, weeks, and active ignition, fire spread, or preliminary holding operations are, are going to occur um, until the prescribed fire is secured. So um, the more ignition operations and active holding operations that we had, we found that the more of those burns had the uh, likelihood of a event happening, a weather event or something else changing in the fire environment that influenced the fire to escape. Um, or patrolling, scheduling, keeping people, you know, that's more people, more resources to keep track of, organizational span of controls breaking down, things like that on long duration prescribed burns. So it really influences the complexity. So that's what the intent of the duration is. Um, so here we've got some descriptors, same same process, and um, if see if it cuts some of those off, you can you can make it a little bit bigger. Um, and so yeah, just work your way down through uh, management organization. A lot of the uh, elements are the same. One that did change is um, we went from probability of escape or um, potential for escape to resistance to containment um, and that's more in line with some of the incident fire management um, ratings or uh, evaluations that we use um, commonly and so um, and it, it, it kind of reflects better as to what what we're looking, what we were looking for, um, if the fire does occur outside the burn unit, um, what's what's going to happen out on the other side of the line there? So, um, same thing, a lot of descriptors and uh, thought processes on the commonalities on on where uh, what resistance and containment for low, moderate, and high means. Uh, so we go ahead and we get done. We got our preliminary risk done. We print this thing up. We do whatever. Then we go build our prescribed fire plan, looking at these risks um, that we've identified at, around these values. Um, once that's completed, we wrote our plan. We feel pretty good with it. Come back and we run a post-plan risk analysis. And so we got another 
column on here. Um, it's the same descriptors, just um, you know you can identify what they are, and you can write in here uh, in your text box, you know what, how you mitigated those risks that were identified in the first one, um, how what the risks are now, and then just leave use this column over here, column E, to actually identify the elements of the prescribed fire plan that where those mitigations are identified. So if it's in the prescription here, you know, so you could just say um, down here you could say um, you know prescribed fire parameters mitigate wind speeds and RH levels so that um, they're less likely to cause a uh, resistance to control outside the burn unit. And then over here you would say you know element seven parameters uh, pay and put the page number so that the reviewer, it's really good for the technical reviewer then to be able to look through this and then just go straight to the prescribed fire plan with the page number and what parameter it was. And so if you've got six different parameters that mitigate the safety risk from the preliminary um, to the post, you would identify those here. Um, that's what that's for and that's a real Real handy tie for the for anybody looking at the plan really to go see where those mitigations are and to quickly go between documents. Uh, so same process after that. You just go on down through, identify your mitigations, where they are in the plan. Pick them as they go. We'll change them up for the final product here. All right, so there we go. And uh, yeah, these are all text boxes. So then, after we've done that, we go to the technical difficulty tab. And uh, again, these will probably all be high when you download it from NWCG. Um, the default would be high for this. So you can, uh, and the descriptors for technical difficulty are different than the ones for risk. So they, we actually went through and developed a whole set of rating descriptors for each technical difficulty rating level for each element. Um, and they're identified here. So if you change them, it changes the definition. Um, and I believe the definitions for safety for technical difficulty are um, just like with the descriptors. They're a, specific to technical difficulty for that element. So for here, you'd go in, choose your technical difficulty by looking at your descriptors and seeing where it might fit and writing your um, narrative on for your specific project. You go on down um, and it gives you the um, descriptors some 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 ticklers here for what we're taught what we're uh, looking for what you could be thinking about when you're writing these um, narratives and then always save so we're gonna keep saving that thing I forgot to I probably would have lost it by now uh, we get all that finished up the summary and final complexity worksheet which is also the um, going to be the element three that's printed and put in the burn plan. You can see our name for the project carried over into here, into that block. These were our ratings for our values. Um, this is a table that identifies the ratings that you applied pre, post, and the technical difficulty, and then the calculated rating on this side. And that's a uh, just a mathematical calculation and you can click on here and see the um, see the formulas that were used for that if you're looking for assumptions of the model or anything but that's just that rating is just to help guide and illustrate where the planning process brought us for this burn um, so we go on down and there this uh, slider bar here identifies where we started this is our Pre-plan risk um, was up here in, like, say, the high, the low high. 
and through mitigation where we identified it this is the calculated um, rating right here so that's what this slider bar for is just a visual on where we started where we wound up in the range of uh, low moderate high for complexity um, here's the here's a pretty important block here the final complexity determination is based on the technical reviewers opinion the berm plan preparers for opinion the agency administrator the whole the stakeholders where they feel this burn should be um, and so say it, it identifies us up here maybe somewhere in this close to the high range but it's a very common occurrence on on your piece of ground that you use all the time or there's other mitigating factors that aren't included in the complexity analysis for one reason or another um, you can you can you're the one responsible for choosing the determination and this is where you put your this is a free text box that um, you can write your summary and your justification for the for the prescribed fire uh, complexity rating signature blocks for everybody and hopefully when that's done you can hit save again come up here to file hit print and it should look like that um, should be two pages and landscape uh, if these settings don't come across with your like when you download it um, I'll I can uh, provide a copy of these these settings or something but it's landscape orientation uh, letter size narrow margins and you fit all columns on one page and hopefully that it'll look like this when you get done um, so we're going to go back to that and I believe well while I'm in the worksheet uh, I'm going to go back to the values tab and open it up to the to the floor here um, are, are there any questions anybody need any more um, you know to questions on how this thing works how we get around in it how to adjust the cell sizes any any of that Dave feel free to hop in there and provide comment if I miss something hey Mike I, I have a question for you sure yeah so on the on the values tab that you're on now so for like the on-site just want to make sure I understand so in the free free text box you could potentially have let's say 10 or 15 values but your quantity and significance you're really out of whatever those values you list you may pick out like the top three or four out of your list is that correct yes yes yeah. okay so that that's where you're picking your nominal or your moderate that's where you're picking your different colors your quantity and significance is yeah so you could top. you could have like yeah like can uh, yeah. multiple or considerable and in the in the guide it breaks down um, kind of gives you examples of like what multiple means you know how many it's likely to be considered multiple uh, but that's kind of it's up to you and it's just like with the um, you know when we're doing the incident complexity rating um, it asks the same question but it's kind of up to you to identify well what does multiple it, are there multiple or are there considerable um, out there and then the, the same thing with the significance there might be considerable amount of uh, values on site but they're um, almost you know there's there's secondary in consideration to implementing a, a prescribed burn you know because they're not going to be likely affected or they're just going to receive positive benefit from it um, you know that kind of thing so those are though there's still subject subjectivity um, throughout this this process but uh, the prescribed fire planners and uh, agency administrators and, I, and all of us we are we are the subject matter experts so we sh our opinion does matter um, and our subjectivity is um, hate to say it it's part of the art of this science so um, we left 
as much subjectivity in there as as appropriate i think okay thank you yep one other thing i uh so in i didn't go over was protecting and unprotecting the worksheet when you download the worksheet from nwcg you may need it, or if you do when you download mine i'm not sure but if you can't fill in one of the blocks or you can't change the size of a cell you might need to go to review up here in the in the tools uh, bar there and pick unprotect sheet um, if if you're having trouble adjusting the cells or anything like that all right so anybody else out there want to take a look at it again I have practiced doing some cut and paste from uh, some other documents just for a you know a bullet or two in this value cell it works pretty well but one thing that you need to consider this is Excel and not Word so the word processing um, ability of this block isn't uh, isn't as robust as Word or one of the other word processing platforms so uh, you may want to type some of your um, descriptors in a, a word do type document or something and try bringing that in to here um, just so it it looks better formatting if you're worried about that hey Mike hey Dave hey um, so I think we've solved or at least resolved the, uh, somewhat the visual issue with printing, uh, just just printing, uh, with a with a newer version uh, on the NWCG website. Oh, good. So so it scales now and prints the preliminary, post and post plan technical difficulty. It, it'll it'll pay uh, print them on multiple pages, kind kind of along the way you you guys set up. So, so oh, good. That's resolved, and I'll uh, I'll make sure that that buyer behavior uh, definition gets uh, expanded a bit. It's good on all the rest of them, but for some reason that one didn't make it. Well, I'm glad I found it for us. It. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Dave. That's good news. So uh, hopefully everybody copied on that. That um, the NWCG site the. Uh, uh, 424-1, um, if you go there now and download it, we'll have the scaling and the formatting and the printability of issues addressed. So that's, that's great. That's good news. All right. Anybody else out there got any questions or feedback? If you um, have some feedback, I guess... We can um, you can send it my way. I was looking for uh, not sure if you can get into the um, SharePoint or the uh, Adobe Connect and and add any notes or anything. But um, we have the Q and A open there. If you want to type some comments in, I'll leave it open um, for a little while here. And just uh, if you think anything or you have any comments just put them in that Q&A box and I'll try to get things answered for you and all that if not uh, I appreciate y'all hopping on here hopefully it was helpful and uh, yeah give us some feedback on Adobe Connect if it worked for you or not and uh, and, and the complexity analysis so um, thanks thanks for doing this Mike this, this was informative good Thank you. You're welcome, Dave. It's, I'm glad you were on here, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Have a good one. You too, buddy. Ah, the SharePoint. Okay.